Well, you know that animation. You know the sound. <laughs> That's right. You know the letters. You know the words. Uh, it is Hurricane HQ week here at Fox Weather, and today we are taking a look at the widespread impacts of some of these storms. Uh, you know, I think it's easy and safe to say we've seen a, a fair share of historically impactful, yeah. devastating hurricanes in our lifetime, in your lifetime perhaps. But the concept of a hurricane season it didn't emerge until the 20th century. Our forecast tools, methods of collecting data, they've improved technological advances. That's also allowed us to message these storms better. But the world that we live in now, so many people living along many vulnerable coastlines across the lower 48, makes us wonder, what if some of these early recorded storms made landfall today? And when I say early recorded storms, some of these didn't even have an official name. Let's bring in Fox Weather Hurricane Specialist Brian Norcross. No one better to talk about this than Brian, um, because when you go back to hurricanes of note, historical ones, um, these were mean. These were monsters. Yeah, I can remember those 19th century storms like they were yesterday. <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, <laughs> so Stephen and Marissa, good morning and a good day to you. So the, um, the the lesson here is, you know, if you if you don't know history, you're doomed to repeat it, right? So we thought it was really important for folks along the coast who are very familiar with these horrible storms like Hurricane Ian, but to know that there were storms worse than Ian, even twice as bad as Ian in terms of the cost to the coast. So when you look at a past hurricane and say, how would that impact modern uh, hurricane zone in the United States, that's a tricky thing. So the first thing you would look at is the population increase and or the housing increase. So uh, in the same zone where the hurricane hit, has the population increased? Of course it has. But that's not the best measure. The better measure is how many housing units have increased in that area. That's still not a perfect measure, but it is something to look at. So those are two different ways that people make this kind of approximation. Another is to talk about just plain old inflation. How much is the dollar worth? How much wealth is there? So when you combine all this together, you get a variety of lists. But generally, they all contain at least these storms. And generally, number one or maybe number two is this one. And that's the Great Miami Hurricane of 1926. It came uh, up from uh, north of Puerto Rico. It only had these little islands to slow it down. And it slammed into South Florida on September 18th, 1926. There you see. And the thing that's so unusual about this, here's the track down here, well south of Miami. And the city and South Beach are in the eye. Downtown Fort Lauderdale is flooded up to six feet. Downtown West Palm Beach is also flooded. This was such a giant storm, it destroyed Hollywood and Dania. We actually have a uh, film from 1926. And take a look here. You're going to see uh, downtown Miami as it was after the storm. And there's the Royal Palm Hotel, which sat right there on the Miami River. And about 10 feet of water came into downtown Miami. And 95% uh, of the buildings in all of metropolitan Miami, Fort Lauderdale, were damaged or destroyed in this one giant hurricane that hit in September of 1926. Okay, let's move on to uh, the next one. To go, we're going to go way back. This is the last Category 3 or above, believed to be Category 3, to hit New York City. It's called the Norfolk and Long Island Hurricane of 1821. And believe it or not, we actually have a newspaper from 1821. It was called the Tremendous Gale, uh, estimated Category 3, wind damage, widespread flooding, and it hit at low tide. And there's a big tide swing in New York, but it still flooded the battery. All of the waterfront was destroyed in the storm and lots of damage through the city. So if this were to happen again, this would be a problem for the high rises and skyscrapers in New York City. We just rarely get a storm in New York City. Okay, here's one. How about Tampa Bay? How bad was it in Helene? You go, boy, that was the worst we've ever seen. Well, I'll tell you what, if this happened again, this would be about twice as bad. This is the Great Gale of 1848, and it wasn't in October, actually. It was in, this is the September 25th storm. Came right over Clearwater, downtown Tampa, and put tremendous storm surge into Tampa Bay. And here's a picture of what was called Fort Brook at the time. The little village of Tampa was right next to it. This fort was destroyed. There you see it, September 25th. Storm surge estimated 12 and a half feet above high tide, 
but it came in at low tide, so a total of 15 feet of storm surge. Pinellas County was cut from the Gulf all the way into Hillsborough Bay, and so they had to fill that back in to have the Pinellas County we have today. And then... Three weeks later, there was another hurricane moved just to the north. This one, about 10 feet of storm surge. So that was a crazy year. So in Tampa Bay, it can be a lot worse than Helene is the main point. All right, to Galveston. Now, you know about the 1900 Galveston hurricane that killed some 8,000 or more people. This is the 1915 Category 4 hit Galveston again. The difference is with this one a little farther north, this one would have gone into Houston. So this is always high on the list. Galveston, where over 8,000 people died in 1900, only in the hundreds died in, in this one because that seawall they built. But Houston wasn't really there yet in a big way. So if this happened today with those millions and millions of people in Houston, this would be up in the $200 billion uh, range. There was the newspaper at the time. Hurricane has struck the mainland. No communication uh, with Galveston, estimated 130 miles per hour. So there was plenty of damage, but not like there had been. All right, the 1928, the Okeechobee hurricane. This thing was actually called San Felipe Segundo when it hit Puerto Rico as a Category 5 on September 13th, called Segundo, meaning second, because there had been another San Felipe hurricane, because September 13th is San Felipe Day in the Catholic calendar. That's why they named it that. Then a beeline to West Palm Beach. They were scared to death in South Florida because that huge hurricane that had happened two years before, the Miami hurricane, this one missed Miami, hit West Palm Beach and Lake Okeechobee. The winds coming around like this took the water of the lake and put it over these towns south of Lake Okeechobee and uh, killed at least 2,500 people. Estimates three or 4,000 people may have died, mostly migrant farm workers there. And we have pictures from the 1928 hurricane. The pictures are mostly from, uh, the, uh, from West Palm Beach. You see there was complete destruction there in West Palm Beach as that Category 4 hurricane uh, came uh, in there, Palm Beach, West Palm Beach, and points north, which are very populated now, uh, would have been uh, had big destruction and would again if this storm uh, came along again. All right, and the last one is the Great New England Hurricane, also called the Long Island Express. And I wanted to make the point about this one because look where it was 24 hours before, off Florida. This is 24 hours before it made landfall up here. And it took this beeline to the north. And just imagine if you live on Long Island, you live in New England, Providence, uh, anywhere in New England, imagine a storm is off Florida. Would you be in a hurry to get prepared, even if they said it was coming? It's, a, it's hard to imagine. When we look here, the places that uh, really took it hard here, the eastern end of Long Island was destroyed. Providence, we have film of Providence underwater. Uh, the, uh, the trees in New England, uh, it, was a, it destroyed a huge number of the trees in New England. Most of the trees are post-1938 that you see growing in New England today. There you see, we'll have some pictures here of, of Providence. It was flooded up to the second floor. Doors, Narragansett Bay pushed to the north. So the point is, all of these storms would be worse than any storm that we have seen in all these great hurricanes we've had over the last several years. Uh, so as, as uh, incredible as these storms, the Ians and the Michaels mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Helene and Milton have been, uh, if these historic storms come back, it's on a whole different scale. And I just think it's important for everybody in the hurricane zone to understand that this is the reality just, just in the little short time that the United States has been here, let alone uh, in historic time. We know there have been great storms uh, even before that 1821 storm, obviously. Yeah, which, is, uh, which is a fascinating dive, uh, uh, Brian. I mean, I, out, of, out of the folks that I, that I know who know hurricanes, the yeah. 19th century storms, um, you're the guy that I would go to. And it's interesting among that list, because I know that there are so many more you could have talked about, um, but, but highlighting a few of right. those that have reached the Northeast, because that is such a rare thing to occur in the modern era. I mean, you were even yeah. mentioning it. Um, mm -hmm. Sandy is, is kind of the point of reference, right? 
Yeah, and that was not much of a windstorm. Right. Where in 1938 you had this tremendous windstorm, also a huge storm surge storm that that drowned uh, uh, Providence. But the, the wind yeah. went all the way into New England, and it was like the 1815 hurricane and the 1635 hurricane. So it doesn't happen often. But when it happens, the the storms can be incredible and tremendously damaging in the Northeast of New England. Yeah, yeah, uh, a fascinating list. Appreciate you bringing that to us. Uh, important on the on the Hurricane HQ week, which uh, which rolls on. Fox Weather Hurricane Specialist Brian Norcross for us. Brian, thank you.